Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. San Francisco. Everyone sing along. Follow the bouncing, well, I would say ball, but since the bums are now crapping in the street like dogs, San Francisco has become not the laughing stock of the world, but the toilet bowl of the world. Welcome to the Savage Nation. There are a lot of news stories out there, including the tragedy of a disgruntled uh, employee who was once fired after fabricating claims of racism, picking up a gun and killing a young woman reporter and her newsman, point blank range, uh, and then posting it on his Facebook page. Uh, the killer was fired after fabricated claims of racism. We have other stories to talk about, but the one I want to lead with on the Savage Nation is uh, the picture of a bum crapping in the streets of San Francisco openly as though it's a toilet. Now, of course, you may remember there was a young lady na named uh, Steinle who was shot in cold blood by an illegal immigrant a few months ago with a gun he claims he found under a bench. That's not been followed up by the uh, city fathers or city mothers or the city transgendered, whoever runs the city, it's hard to tell. Uh, the bums are out of control. Crime is out of control. After the story of the homeless infestation, which we're going to talk about, there's another story out of San Francisco. Just yesterday afternoon, on the crookedest street in San Francisco, known uh, to everyone as the windingest street, known as Lombard Street, no crime. Two guys pull up in a car, grab a camera from a tourist from Thailand, and then shoot him in the shoulder when the Thai tourist ran after them. In the middle of the day, the robbers, undescribed, jumped into a red sedan and sped away. But an officer spotted the getaway vehicle driving onto the San Francisco Bay Bridge and gave chase. CHP officers, hats off to them, and they had one of the suspects and recovered a gun as they stopped in a rental neighborhood in the Oakland area. The other robber took off running who has not been, uh, f oh, he's just been found when he was cornered by members of the SF Police Department Tactical Division and an Emeryville Police K-9 unit. Now, we do not know if uh, these gentlemen were doing so because of any grievances, but we do know that San Francisco has now become virtually uninhabitable because of the bums crapping in the street because of the robbery and the crime that's being covered up. And I don't blame the police. I blame liberalism. Liberalism is a mental disorder. And wherever super liberals take over, the cities go to the toilet bowl. Look at New York. I was just there last week. You, you take your life in your hands, walking around with the folks with the box cutters underneath the, uh, the cup, the shaking cup. But I want to talk about the bums in San Francisco, the bums in New York. In other words, what you call homeless. The word homeless itself is a fabrication of the radical left. Because so far as I know, there is no biblical, I don't, let's talk about the Constitution, not, not the Bible. Can anyone show me where in the Bible it says I owe, owe a bum a house? Show me where it says I owe them a house. What I owe them is a jail cell or a mental hospital. That's the only housing that they're entitled to. So the bums are now so brazen because the cops have been neutralized by the liberals that they're literally openly defecating and peeing in the streets in front of people. Now, you know the city for its Golden Gate Bridge, the mixture of uh, cultures and races, the beautiful fog, and ma mainly the bums, the out-of-control bums who came into the city mainly during the hippie era. They urinate in your face now. They've been doing this for a long time. It has gotten real bad under the new mayor, Mayor Ed Lee, the worst mayor in the history of San Francisco has brought about a crime wave unseen in the city's history. And so I ask you on the Savage Nation across the country, how would you solve the homeless infestation? There are answers raging from the liberal answer, which is build them all houses. And you well know what would happen if you gave every bum a house or an apartment. They would destroy it. They would destroy it within 30 days. They would become uninhabitable cesspools. 
The other side says, lock them up, put them in a mental hospital. Now, I want to talk about that side of it. As you well know, most of the homeless bums are mentally ill or overt criminals hiding from the law. I've known this for years. They're extremely dangerous as a population. Not all, but many of them are extremely dangerous criminals hiding out as homeless. Uh, the other class are mentally ill who belong in mental hospitals. But Governor Jerry Brown's father, uh, Governor Edmund Pat Brown, closed the state mental hospitals uh, as uh, by law. And then when Ronald Reagan became governor, he had to uh, follow the law. And he went ahead and followed Edmund Pat Brown's law and closed the, the mental hospitals. As a result, people who would normally be locked up for doing things along the lines of crapping in the street, urinating in the street, uh, spitting on people, etc., breaking windows, would be arrested. They would be considered mentally incompetent, and they'd be put in a place where they can get the care that they need, which is a mental hospital. But all the mental hospitals were closed. Now, I have said we should reopen the mental hospitals. I've said this as far as 15 years ago on The Savage Nation. What solution do you have for the out-of-control infestation of bums in the United States of America? There is a solution. Not every country on earth is plagued by bums. Countries that are plagued by liberal politicians are plagued by bums. Countries which are run by sane individuals are not plagued by bums. And so I ask you what you would do as a citizen of the United States of America if you were asked to advise uh, the leadership of the country how to get rid of the homeless infestation in San Francisco, New York, Chicago, Washington, D.C. It's perhaps per capita worse in my hometown of San Francisco. Now, I got to tell you something. I moved here in 1974, and I was charmed by the city. I thought it was gorgeous. When I came back from New York last weekend, uh, I, I couldn't wait to get into San Francisco. And so I went into the city. As you know, I have multiple dwellings. I move around for obvious reasons. I'm not in the same place for many nights in a row. I move around from one to the other. I have done this for years. I did not stay more than 30 minutes until I, re I fled out of San Francisco. Nothing happened overtly to me. There was a feeling in San Francisco of filth and disorder and an undertone of violence that had me leave the city almost immediately, far worse than in New York. This city is a city that, is easily, that easily deceives you, and you could see it in the architecture of the city. There was a joke that went around when I first moved here in 74 and was looking for a house. I had a realtor who drove me around. He was a very funny guy. He's a nice gay guy. And he said, oh, in this city, what we have is called uh, a Queen Anne front and a Mary Anne behind. Well, I laughed hysterically. That's San Francisco to a T. It's a Queen Anne front and a Mary Anne behind. And the facade has crumbled a long time ago. The stucco has come off the facade. The city is now nakedly exposed for what it is. It's not a charming city of I left my heart and said bring, bring flowers in your hair at all. It's disgusting. And what we need is a, t a strike force. First, we need the FBI to come in and get to the bottom of the corruption. It is the most corrupt city in the United States of America. And by the way, you know and I know there are billions of dollars being stolen out of this state on a daily basis. High-speed railroad to nowhere. That's on a state level. Uh, the streets are broken. Go and try to drive on Lombard Street going to the Golden Gate Bridge. Ask yourself where the highway funds went. Go and look at the approach to the Golden Gate Bridge and see if you can ride in it without an SUV with snow tires, without damaging your wheels. We have roads in San Francisco that are an embarrassment to the world. Malaysia has better roads than we have here. And yet billions of dollars are spent. Where do the billions of dollars go? Where are the highway funds? No one has an answer for that. But what would you do with the bums? That's what I'm asking you. Let's use common sense. There is nothing in the Constitution that says we are required to give a person who is either lazy or, let's say, mentally incompetent uh, a house. Certainly, we don't want to hurt them, so we put them in, in uh, institutions. And we used to have institutions. They were called mental hospitals, where they were given meals, they were given a clean bed, they were given showers. But most importantly, they were supervised to keep them under control because society at large cannot supervise the number of people that are now roaming the streets who call themselves homeless. They shake a cup at you, and if you don't give them what uh, they want, they threaten you or they insult your wife, they insult your daughter. 
it's out of control. And now they're openly defecating and urinating in the streets of San Francisco. And of course, we have a crime wave in San Francisco that the old city fathers, mothers, or transgenders who run it don't want you to know about. The fact is, is that the city is out of control because liberalism is a mental disorder. It cannot manage anything for one primary reason. Liberalism runs on the premise of tolerance. Everyone says, well, what's wrong with tolerance, Michael Savage? Aren't we supposed to be tolerant of others? Yes, we are. But ultra tolerance is what is destroying the United States of America. We are ultra tolerant of the bums. We are ultra tolerant of the drug addicts. We're ultra tolerant of, uh, on an international level, the worst terrorist the world has seen since Adolf Hitler called ISIS. Why are we so tolerant of the rapes, the murders, and the kidnappings on an international level? Barack Obama is very tolerant of ISIS and has no tolerance for the American people who voted out all of his left-wing fanatical policies. So I open it up to you. What would you do with them? How would you get rid of the homeless bums in the United States of America in a humane way? What would you do with this scourge? If, let's say Donald Trump becomes president. We hope he cleans up the country. Well, hope he becomes president, but he's not going to clean up every problem in the country overnight. Uh, but th that's a separate issue. And you're the advisor. You're now the special advisor on homelessness in America. Of course, the, the word homeless is, is an invention of the liberal community itself. That implies that they're entitled to a home. No, they're entitled to a cot in a mental hospital or a cot in a jail cell. That's about what they're entitled to. They're not entitled to a home. And the proof is they cannot manage themselves in a home. If you see them in a home, they usually destroy what they're given. They will not care for themselves because they don't want to or they can't. So having said that, again, the primary issue is how would you solve the homeless infestation? And while you're calling 855 407 We'll play Tony Bennett and his great song, Come to San Francisco. No, that's the, that's the one. Well, he didn't leave his heart in San Francisco. He has to change the lyrics. From I left my heart in San Francisco, it's something else now. You leave your shoes in San Francisco after you come here on a visit. You throw them out at the airport. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Yeah, and be sure to wear galoshes and a raincoat. A bulletproof vest wouldn't be a bad idea if you're down on the Embarcadero and an illegal alien happens to find a gun under a bench and wants to shoot some sea lions, make sure you're not caught in the crossfire. So a uh, bulletproof vest would be good, galoshes, sure, to avoid the urine in the streets, and uh, a raincoat in case you want to sit down somewhere and you don't want to get some fecal matter on your clothing. If you think I'm exaggerating, go to michaelsavage.com, take a look at the article linked up from the San Francisco newspaper, and you'll see them literally defecating in the open. Now, how did this happen? How did we get here? What would you do to end the scourge, the, the pandemic of, of, uh, of, of, of the bums in the streets? Well, let's start with who put them in the streets. I have an article that I researched for you from 1984 from the New York Times, if you could believe it, when the New York Times was still a newspaper of note. This article by Richard Lyons is entitled, How Release of Mental Patients Began. The policy that led to the release of most of the nation's mentally ill patients from the hospital to the community is now widely regarded as a major failure, he wrote, 1984. Sweeping critiques of the policy, notably the recent report of the American Psychiatric Association, have spread the blame everywhere, faulting politicians, civil libertarian lawyers, and psychiatrists. But who specifically played some of the more important roles in the formation of this ill-fated policy? What motivated these influential people and what lessons are to be learned? This is all from 1984. In California, for example, the number of patients in state mental hospitals reached a peak of 37,000 in 1959 when Edmund G. Brown was governor. It fell to 22,000 when Ronald Reagan attained that office in 1967 and continued to decline under his administration and that of his successor, Edmund G. Brown, uh, Jr. The senior Mr. Brown now expresses regret about the way the policy started and ultimately evolved. They've gone far too far in letting people out, he said in an interview. Dr. Robert H. Felix, who was then director of the National 